Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to start by thanking the organizers for inviting me and then also acknowledging uh, the work done by my two master students, Gavin Vivaldi and Jacob Chen. Today, I have uh, four parts in my presentation. First, illumination or the experiment setup, then movement or the tests that we have conducted, and then camera or the results that we have recorded, and then action or the conclusions that we can draw from this. So let me start with uh, illumination. So uh, in this presentation, I'll be using uh, data from two projects that we are running in my lab. Uh, the first one is a project where we aim to uh, use RPPG uh, to estimate the heart rate. So what we do is that we record uh, people under different conditions, uh, mainly on an exercise bike so that we get variation in the heart rate. And then we apply various uh, methods for doing remote uh, photoplasmography in order to estimate the heart rate based on the video alone. And we compare that then with ECG estimates. And here you can see our experiment set up. So you see that we have the exercise bike in the center and then it's surrounded by four different cameras that we use for recording. And then we have lights that we use for changing the illumination level. And then we also have a TV screen where we actually show instructions uh, to the person doing the experiment and the green screen behind the person. And here you can see pictures of me when I'm carrying out the experiment. Now, the second um, project from which I will be using data is our uh, EUPDRS project. Uh, where we uh, have recorded data from Parkinson patients and normal control subjects in uh, two different clinics in order to um, be able to develop new video-based methods uh, for automatic UPDRS scoring of the patients. Uh, so this is an aim, in other words, to digitalize the today completely manual scoring system that is being used by physicians. And uh, the UPDRS uh, test set consists of multiple tests. And we here have carried out a subset of these in order to be able to do method development. Here you can see images of our experiment setup. So we have both recordings of the hand using five different cameras, and then also recordings of the foot or leg using four different cameras. Now, let me move over to movement. Now for the heart rate estimation, uh, we performed uh, a total of eight different tests. We have three static tests under different illumin illumination conditions. Uh, then we have three bike tests also under different illumination conditions and then a speaking test and a rotating test for our Parkinson disease project. We currently record finger tapping movement. And uh, then we have a rest tremor where you just uh, rest your arm and then hand movements and postural tremor where you just keep out the arm straight out. And then for the foot, we have toe tapping and then we have a rest tremor. And I'm not gonna try to show you my leg here. Now, uh, for these videos, we have been uh, 
measuring the video quality mainly using the video intrinsic integrity and distortion evaluation oracle or video score uh, which is a method implemented in uh, the sk video package and was published by metal et al in 2015 and then for some of the videos we have also used the video quality evaluator VDEVAL um, that was published by two at all in 2021. Now let's go over to the results. So first, if we look at uh, the video converted to grayscale and we compare the four different cameras that we have for the heart rate experiment, and we have our uh, eight different tests here. Then you can see that the video score varies significantly. Uh, when we have the bike test with very low illumination, on average 40 looks, then we get a low score. Then when we increase the illumination to 200 looks, we get a higher score. And then with 700 looks, an even higher on average. Uh, by the way, can you see my mouse marker or not? Thank you. And then uh, this rotate and speak test was also conducted at around 200 looks. And then for the static tests, then we again had 40 looks, 200 looks, and uh, 700 looks. And you can see that the higher light intensity, the higher a video score we have. And this pattern is actually uh, present for essentially all the cameras. Now, this third camera here, uh, you can see that here on the variation is much smaller. And that's because uh, I think uh, this is, let me see now. Um, so camera number three. Um, so this is one of the mobile phones that we are using. And this one uh, is surprisingly good at low light conditions. Um, so we can see that we have larger variation here and it's a little bit poorer when it comes to the static ones, but it's surprisingly good actually in low light conditions. And that's what makes the video score more even in this case. So uh, let us now move uh, forward and just take a look at the red channel where we have the same pattern. Then if we go to the green channel, we again have the same pattern. And for the blue channel, we again have the same pattern. Now, if we instead uh, look at uh, the bike test with uh, illumination level one, and we actually plot all these uh, four channels together, uh, then we can see that indeed the results are consistent we have a slightly higher video score here for the red channel and slightly lower for the gray, but otherwise it's more or less the same. Uh, similarly, if we look at the level three illumination and also if we look at level five illumination, and then if we go to the rotation test, uh, and if we look at the level three illumination for the speak test, and then the static test for level one, and we have the static test for level three illumination, and then for level five illumination. Now, the interesting thing is that we, if we then instead apply different methods to estimate the heart rate um, and we measure the absolute error in beats per minute, um, then we can see that these errors vary in a different fashion among 
uh, these uh, different tests. Uh, we, for example, now this green method is a little bit problematic in the sense that it's only successful in 3% of the intervals of the video that we use for determining the heart rate. So to determine the heart rate, we actually need an interval. So we have been using a 30 second interval and then having 25 seconds overlapping with the other intervals so that we actually get a number for every five seconds of the video recording. Um, and this percentage here is for how many of these intervals that the method actually was successful in obtaining a heart rate estimate uh, that has an error less than 10 beats per minute. Um, the reason for why we exclude the large ones is that they essentially become completely random and can be very large. So it would be difficult to read this figure if I had included them. You wouldn't see the interesting parts. Um, if we in, um, then uh, you can see for ECA, we also have a lot of a high failure rate. And uh, then if we go to CROM, so this is a method that performs significantly better. It's actually successful in 100% of the cases for the bike three test here with the highest illumination of 700 lux, the level five illumination. And it also happens to be successful in 100% of the cases for the static one and static two tests with 40 and uh, 200 looks. Huh? And in the other cases, we are also successful in more than 90% of them. And um, uh, what you can see here is that, okay, the error is a little bit higher here when we have a lower illumination level. But here we actually on average have the lowest error uh, for the intermediate illumination level and slightly higher for the higher one. Now, since of course this error violins are overlapping, uh, it's not statistically significant, significant this, real, this difference, but we have a small tendency towards it. And in if we look at the static ones, it actually happened that we got the best results here for the first method. Now, um, another method that performed reasonably well is uh, POS. And then we have uh, this uh, CSC method that also performs well and the CROM PRNet method. And uh, depending on the test, a different method is actually performing best. So let us now pick the best of these methods for each of the conditions. And then we look at the absolute error here. Um, the thing is that uh, different methods for estimating uh, the heart rate are good under different conditions. And that's why we need to have a data set with very different conditions in order to uh, be able to find which method to use when. Um, and um, as you can see, uh, all of these methods actually fail under some condition. Uh, so that means that none of them is uh, good in every condition. Now, um, if we then yeah, take the best method for each uh, case, uh, then we can see that the average and the median error is uh, larger for the bike one test than what it is for the bike two test, which is the smallest one, slightly smaller than also the bike three test. Then uh, for the speak test, we have a similar level. Uh, for the static one, we actually end up getting the smallest average error and also median error. And then the error is slightly larger for static two and for static three. Um, 
And uh, then you can see that in some of these cases, we have some intervals for which the error is uh, significantly larger than for the other ones. Now, this means that in other words, the video score itself is not uh, predictive for how accurately we will be able to estimate the heart rate. Um, if we look at the absolute percentage error instead, uh, another metric, uh, then we actually get a similar picture. And we can all also um, yeah, see that the methods, of course, are failing in the same cases and being successful in the same cases. Um, and uh, if we again just take the best methods, then you can see that we have exactly the same pattern here uh, for the absolute percentage error. Now, uh, if we then look at the correlation between the video score and the mean absolute error in beats per minute, um, then we end up with a Pearson correlation coefficient of minus 0 0.03, uh, which means that there's no correlation. Now, that, of course, is uh, largely due to us having these methods that don't perform well included in the data set. But also, if we looked at the leading edge, in other words, we took the best method here for each video score, then we can see that we don't really have a very clear pattern. Um, now, the variation here is uh, though small, so small that we can't really say that it's statistically significant. So um, if one neglects then this uh, variation that we have here, then the fairest thing would be to say that for these videos, it doesn't really matter what the video score is within this range. Uh, we will get similar heart rate estimates anyway. Now, um, to be able um, to explain and provide more insight into um, how these methods actually work and these failures that I was speaking about. I have here plotted the trajectory uh, of the heart rate during the bike experiment with level one illumination. And in green, we have the ground truth recorded by a clinical ECG device. Um, and then um, we have three of the methods, three of the best performing methods here, because it would become too messy if we included all the methods. And you can see that this uh, CSC method, it fails completely for some intervals. Um, and uh, then see, uh, sorry, the Chrome PRN and Chrome they perform similarly well and actually track the heart rate well, except here where we in the ground truth actually have very quick changes, um, which I'm a little bit questioning if that could have been some problem with the connection. Uh, then, or uh, then it might be that the person became stressed while doing the experiment and that caused the heart rate to quickly go up. That's also a possibility. Um, now, um, here again, we can see failures by the CSC method. And uh, similarly we here, and here we also have that Chrome PRN is uh, deviating significantly from the ground truth in this case. Now let's now take a look at uh, tracking of a mole on the hand of one of our PD subjects. So uh, here you can see the frame recorded by the camera. 
And here you can see an enlargement of a 31 times 31 pixel uh, crop of this mole that exists on the subject's hand. And uh, what we have done here is that we have developed a deep feature encoder for uh, tracking skin features. And uh, then we have applied it using the first frame, in other words, this crop here as our reference that we um, compare every single uh, skin uh, uh, area to, in order to find then the best match based on the latent features that we derive. And uh, you can see that here in red, we have the cumulative sum of standardized squared errors as we are proceeding uh, down the video recording. And uh, in green, we have instead used, uh, used the method where we use the um, crop identified as the best match in the previous frame to identify the best match in the next frame. And that actually results in some drift that causes the cumulative sum of standardized squared errors to become a little bit larger. But uh, both of these methods actually allow us to do tracking um, with an error that is within the 99% confidence interval of our manual labeling uh, that we did. So we manually labeled uh, the position of this uh, skin feature in 40 frames. And we repeated that uh, five times for each frame and then calculated uh, the error distribution, uh, which turned out to fit well with, an, uh, with the assumption of the errors being normal. And uh, then we could determine the 99% confidence interval. So we can say that this deep feature encoder method um, has an error that is indistinguishable from human labeling error. And uh, I think it's likely that it's actually better. But uh, since we can't do better labeling, it's a bit uh, hard to say that. Then here in blue, we have the video score. And uh, the video score is here calculated based on uh, taking the one second of the video following the frame that we actually uh, did the labeling for. So we have each data point here corresponds to a frame we labeled for. And uh, we need video for calculating the video score. So it's for the second following. Uh, each of these frames. And we can see that it varies a little bit, but not so much. Now, if we then look at the correlation between the video score and the standardized squared errors that we have here, uh, then we get a correlation of uh, 0 0.18 for the uh, tracking based on the reference frame and 0 0.21 based on the tracking uh, using the previous frame, but uh, it, the correlation is not significant. Um, and that you can understand also when you look at how these points are spread out here. So also in, in this case, uh, the video score um, does not actually seem to be predictive of how accurately we can uh, track the skin feature. However, uh, we have very small variation in the video quality for this video. So I don't think we can draw any larger conclusions. And we are actually uh, working on processing more of our videos. Um, we also uh, then uh, compared the video score to the video ball score. And um, uh, we can see large variation in the relationship between these scores. Um, so that raises the question, which video quality score should we actually be using? 
Uh, now, similar as for the previous case, we have also been uh, um, creating violent plots to show the distribution of the video scores for our different hand tests that we have here uh, for the left camera, the right camera, and the back camera. Uh, in this case, our uh, Samsung S7. Uh, and they are actually similar. So we have a consistent video quality from these uh, cameras, which is essential. And if we look at the foot data instead, then we can also see that they are consistent. And now over to the conclusions. So uh, video quality depends on the environment and camera. And the video quality affects the results. It in particular affects which method we should use when doing a heart rate estimation. But at least the video score is not predictive of the RPPG nor the tracking error. Um, so we need to do more work in order to find another video score that actually would be predictive of these. And with this, I would like to open up for questions and thank you all and all my lab members who have enabled me to give this presentation.